Well, there are several ways to describe a yoik. Uh, at first, you can you can say it is a vocal tradition who belongs to the Sami people, as you mentioned. But it's a very special tradition. It's very often uh, named as a musical tradition, but it's a lot more. It's a way of communicating in the Sami society, a way of expressing feelings, a way of uh, remembering landscape and uh, relatives. And a simple uh, explanation of yoik is actually to show what a yoik is. So yoik is a, is a vocal tradition, so use your voice in a special way, maybe like this. And it also describes something. So if you want, for, for instance, to describe a fish, so this is a fish, you can use the shape of the fish to form the melody of the yoik, maybe like this. So the yoik always uh, describes an object. For instance, a fish, or it could be anything. It could be a big mountain, or it could be a person. And it's used very special in the Sami culture to uh, have an, uh, a way of uh, communicating. Well, uh, the yoik is a very important part of the Sami culture. And it's, uh, as I said, it's a way of communicating. It's a sort of an extension to the Sami language, you can say. So it's a very part of, very important part of the culture. And, uh, and of course, it's a strong indicator of what is Sami. So the possibility to use yoik to express yourself is a, maybe a f way of uh, uh, connecting or creating a group and a society that the Sami people belongs to. And, uh, and it's, it's also, you can say it belongs to the Sami people because, uh, because it's a way of remembering the culture. So. For instance, if you want to tell your children about your grandparents or some relatives that might have passed away, you can say, you can, you can yoik their yoik, and then you can almost bring them back. It's sort of, uh, instead of showing a photograph of uh, someone, it's, uh, you can yoik someone. So if I, if I yoik, a relative, I'm almost bringing the relative back into the reality and and uh, you can learn about your uh, your ancestors in that way. Yeah, it's a tradition that uh, when a child is born uh, the child is given a yoik, almost in the same way as, uh, as uh, they are given a name. So, uh, so this yoik uh, belongs to the person. It's, and it's a little bit interesting, interesting if you talk to traditional yoikers. Uh, nobody knows who made the yoik but it is very strongly connected to the person being yoiked. And there's also a sense of ownership uh, to this yoik that belongs to the person being yoik, not the person who created it. So it's a, it's, it's a very special tradition, it's, and it is a very strong tradition in the Sami culture. Yes, I can. Uh, I can describe it in many ways. I sh show the fish, but it it can be other uh, more obvious uh, 
like like a big mountain. So there's a so traditional yoik I I know that describes a mountain, and the yoik is like this. And it's uh, it's very easy to hear that this yoik belongs to a mountain with a certain shape and a certain character. It's a huge, strong mountain with steep hills. And the melody sort of uh, expresses that. So, uh, so that's the, what is called as the reference function. The yoik always uh, describes something and almost is the thing being yoiked. And uh, it's very easy to hear if you yoik an animal. Uh, so you almost become the animal. So it's a, it's a way of almost being an animal yourself. So it's a, it's a fantastic way of getting out your your animal feelings or whatever you should call it. <laughs>
out to the rest of the world. And uh, it's uh, difficult not to mention uh, Nils Oslok Valkape or Ailoash, as his, he was called, who was a very central person who was a joiker, but he was also a, uh, an artist who was working together with other musicians. He uh, made a few albums with uh, jazz musicians from, from Finland. And uh, he was also a, uh, he wrote poems, books, pictures, uh, but he kept a lot of the idea behind the joik in his art, uh, whatever he did. So, so he's an important person who brought the, some of the joik tradition out to the rest of the world. And uh, today there are, of course, a lot of Sami artists who have done the same. Uh, but they maybe use some elements of the yoik in the, and connects it to more modern music and uh, and uh, create new music and uh, based it's based on the yoik but maybe not all part of the yoik tradition are kept uh, when this is happening. Well, the term world music, it's, uh, it has a history and it's maybe connected to a certain record label. But, uh, uh, but as I mentioned, there's a lot of Sami art artists today who, uh, who uh, connect the yoik uh, with the modern uh, musical tradition. And, uh, and of course, it's, a, it's an important way to... Uh, to uh, show the world what what some of the yoik tradition is, and it's also a for a lot of artists, it's a, it's a way of creating your own sound based on uh, where you come where you come from, your culture and uh, your history, and uh, I think people uh, Sami artists or artists that use yoik today, they are maybe inspired by the pop pop music rock music jazz music and uh, they use some of this culture and sort of uh, integrates elements of the yoik tradition so uh, and of course this means that the uh, yoik spreads to new areas because uh, People from different parts of the world, they recognize some elements from a musical tradition they know, and they hear some vocal elements that are new and interesting in this. Well, I'm, I must admit I'm one of the composer artists who have used Joik in the connection with the new new musical traditions and one thing I've done is to uh, compose choral music where I use elements from the yoik and uh, write choral arrangement for a, for a standard choir mm -hmm. and uh, uh, one of these compositions happened to uh, be in a store here in Trondheim in Norway when Disney came for doing research for the for the film called Frozen uh, if, if anybody has heard of that and they was very inspired by this uh, choral music inspired by Joik and they wanted to use it in the film so they contacted me and wanted me to make an, a new adapted version of this composition for the film Frozen and uh, which I did and it's, uh, it was a fantastic <laughs> possibility for me, of course, but it, it was also <clears throat> nice to work together with the, the producers uh, and the composer, Christoph Beck, who was doing the rest of the film score for this film, uh, because they had, a, they had a respect for the culture they was trying to use in various ways in this film. And... Uh, of course, it's a fantastic opportunity, and uh, 
I also had the possibility to make some more music for the for the Frozen 2 movie where I also used uh, Joik and uh, yeah it's it's fun <laughs> Uh, well, it's important to look at this as two separate things. The, the traditional yoik is very connected to the traditional Sami culture and the way it's being used. So, of course, when I compose music for a choir, I, I can only use certain elements of the yoik tradition. And, of course, it will be used in a, in a totally new set. Uh, it's being used on stage, on CDs, on Disney films, and uh, a lot of things. Uh, but I, I very often, when I arrange a uh, yoik melody or an idea based on yoik, I, I try to use as many elements from the yoik as possible. So if there is a certain melodic structure that has a small rhythm, rhythm part, uh, I can use this and play it maybe on a drum. Doom, boom, 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 boom. And then I've sort of transformed a elements from the yoik into to another instrument and and uh, just just used the rhythm. So I, I try to explore how how many elements from the yoik you can take out of the original context and and make it into building blocks and uh, then doing an arrangement or or maybe new compositions actually based on the idea behind Joik. Yes, uh, of course, uh, <coughs> you always should, I um, <laughs> should mention. And with, with the Joik tradition, it's a it's an element that you maybe not explore in other musical traditions. And this is the connection with some yoiks being personal yoiks, who actually belongs to the person being yoiked. So, so I try to avoid uh, using th those yoiks uh, if I'm not familiar with the persons being yoiked and know it's okay. And uh, a lot of times I, I actually ask a person. It is. Is it okay that I can use your yoik in a new in a new way? And a lot of people uh, are very positive about this. And maybe someone thinks mm, maybe not. So okay. So then I leave it. So I I try to be very aware of this situation. And uh, uh, and I mostly compose new yoiks. So I use the idea behind how a yoik is composed instead of actually taking a traditional one. So and that's the that's a different thing because then I am the composer and I I have to pay attention to my <laughs> my own composition more than somebody else's. I think uh, uh, I often teach yoik, and I've done that in various parts of the world. Actually, I've had uh, yoik courses in uh, in uh, New York and Tokyo, <laughs> and uh, and the way I is look at this is by teaching someone about the yoik tradition. You are actually teaching. Uh, information about the Sami culture mm. and the, the fact that those you are reaching out to are active and doing this yoik it's a much better way to explain what the, what the Sami tradition is than to just read about it or have a lecture telling about the Sami culture so I, I, I try to include people uh, when I'm trying to uh, tell, talk about the Sami culture and very often teach them uh, the basic of how to yoik and give them the sort of experience of, uh, of uh, trying to do some of the uh, Sami tradition. 
and uh, I think that's a w fantastic way to to spread knowledge about the Sami culture in the world, but also within the borders of uh, Scandinavia, uh, actually, because the, the knowledge of the Sami culture is a little bit less than I would like it to be. So, so to teach people to yoke is a way of, uh, of uh, spreading knowledge. And I think knowledge is a good thing. <laughs>